protests. They are a human right, aren't they? In a functioning democracy, anybody should be allowed to make their voice heard and express their discontent. But sometimes they're also very, very annoying and cause huge levels of disruption and cost our economy billions of pounds. Last night, the government suffered a resounding defeat in the House of Lords as it tried to bring in new laws that could limit the scope of protests in this country. So the government's Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill, which wanted to introduce laws allowing people to stop and search anyone, even without suspicion, to clamp down on protests if they are deemed too loud as well, for example, and many more elements. Anyway, it was all roundly rejected. Some branded it draconian. Others think it's the only way to get to grips with the likes of Insulate Britain or Insulate Prison, as I like to call them now, after their recent verdicts. Well, look, I'm joined now by former frontline police officer Sam Smith and I'm also joined by Matt O'Connor, who is founder of Fathers for Justice, who you may know better as the group of men who, amongst other things anyway, dressed up as superheroes and scaled buildings to raise awareness of fathers' rights. Both of you, <laughs> thank you very, very much. Uh, look, I'll start with you, Matt, if that's Good evening, all right. Patrick. Yeah, evening. Uh, Matt, I'll start with you. Uh, what do you make of the plans to curb these protests? Well, I think we have a long and honourable tradition of process in this country. We wouldn't have a Labour Party if it wasn't for civil disobedience, if it wasn't for the right to protest. We wouldn't have had the suffragettes. Uh, we wouldn't have had a great many uh, uh, political movements which are born in the crucible of uh, civil disobedience. It's a fundamental right. You cannot have a democracy uh, a functioning democracy that doesn't have a fundamental right of protest. This bill, the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill, would have outlawed Fathers for Justice uh, back when we were protesting uh, 10, 15 years ago. It is draconian. It is a sort of bill that would make uh, Vladimir Putin flinch, frankly. Right. And I think it's, it's a mistake for the government to, a government, let's face it, who are Tory toffs who've never had to protest for anything in their lives, uh, don't understand people having to fight for basic rights. Uh, oh, I, think this I don't know about that, Matt. I don't know about that, Matt. There were, there, were, there, were some, there, there were some protests against the ban on fox hunting. You know, let's have it right. But, uh, but I'm going to throw over to you now, Sam, and just ask, <laughs> you're, on the, you're on the other end of this, right? You're on the other end of this. You conceivably will be the kind of person who, when Insulate Britain glued themselves to something, they send you out to the M1, right? How does that feel? Do you think that there was an element or elements of this bill that would have been a good thing? Um, yes and no, but probably mainly no, actually, because I think the problem is the the Insolute, uh, Inst Institute, I uh, can't speak today, um, right. <laughs> Britain it, issue was basically badly handled by the police. I believe they have enough powers to deal with stuff like that. You know, they've got um, obstruct the highway, they've got um, prevent breach of the peace. I think the biggest issue is the fact that we've cut the police so much there isn't enough officers. I think this 20,000 new officer thing is a bit of a farce. I think we've got officers who are rush trained. They haven't got the um, education about what they have on their tools to, to be able to deal with incidents like this. I personally think Insulate Britain, the way they carried on was unacceptable because it caused absolute sort of terror across you know people getting to uh, appointments for medical reasons seeing loved ones who are dying etc that cannot be tolerated in my personal opinion and i know most of the public uh, would probably support that however to completely take the voice away from a whole nation is 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 really pressing on our liberties and i think okay. can't this country and the world are having their liberties pressed on too much with okay. you know covid restrictions covid passports and actually no it, it's too much the way they're doing it and and quite frankly it will backfire on them because i don't believe that actually the police will help to enforce it and they will actually okay. create more work for the police and they'll regret it all right. So, I mean, one of the things that they wanted to do was potentially restrict protests that were too loud. It has to be a democratic right to be able to shout at the House of Commons, right? By definition, the point of a protest outside the House of Commons is so that they can hear it in the building, right? That's the point of it. So you can't clamp down on that. But Matt, I'm going to come back to you. You know, the kind of glory days, as it were, my good man here, you know, the Fathers for Justice <laughs> events, the stunts to, um, to raise awareness. And just talk us through whether or not whether or not they actually had any real tangible success. We've got some fantastic video footage while you talk about it here of, of some of the stuff that you guys were getting up to. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, when I started Fathers for Justice, would you believe it, 20, uh, 20 years ago, 
um, the idea was we had to make raise awareness about the issue. And the only reason, only way we could raise awareness about, you know, the cruel separation of children from their fathers in secret courts, and the issue is still to this day secret, was by doing high profile daring stunts. And I was inspired by the suffragettes. I was inspired by the charters. I was inspired by the labor movement um, to engage. And yeah, you're going to go around and rattle some cages. You're going to upset some people. I think the only difference between us and Extinction Rebellion and Insulate Britain is that we did target uh, the uh, the instruments of power. We yes. we went after <laughs> Buckingham Palace. We went after uh, Tony Blair in the House of Commons and Powder Bomb. You know, we went after the Church of England in York Minster. So our disruption... The National Lottery draw, we can see there as well. That's on the side. Yeah, National Lottery. But we we the disruption was kept to a minimum and targeted at the authorities. OK, all right. Now, Sam, I just want to throw it back to you. Do you feel as though at the moment the police... I think you alluded to it a bit earlier. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Maybe a bit soft on this. Are they actually a bit scared? We live in the iPhone age now. Everything you do is filmed. I think you've all got body cams on to begin with. You've, I mean, this is an era as well where woke culture is just ripping through society, for goodness sake. Are the police a bit scared to act? Would this bill not have given them more definitive powers and more safety in their personal well-being, for example? Yeah, it could do, but it's not the right way to do it. The way we do it is we crack down on the fact that the police are poorly trained now, um, that we're rushing training. We empower the police with education and, and knowing their job. You see so often police officers being recorded, as you mentioned, and actually I cringe because they are getting it wrong. You know, I watched a, a, a probably a career detective um, illegally search someone without actually showing any identity and then they said their warrant card was left in the station. And you see that and it's hard to defend the police and I'm very supportive of the police, but I, I really think this isn't the way to do it. Um, we need to highlight the real issue, which is policing as a whole, um, not protesting. Protesting can be dealt with properly if you have a proper policing in, in place. And we've always been able to deal with it. The reason why we can't deal with it now is there is new crimes being created left, right and centre to do with like uh, phone crimes, hate crimes, whatnot. And the police force, whatever anyone will try and make you believe in the Home Office, is smaller than ever and less experienced than ever. You've lost all the experienced officers because they've had enough. As soon as they've got their pensions, they'll be gone and we'll have a cycle of probably teenagers policing for about three to five years and then they'll renew themselves. Um, and as you say, a lot of them, their well-being will be so bad they'll leave. But changing our liberties is just silencing the problem. It doesn't actually help. Actually, I, I have a campaign called Green Ribbon Policing where I argue for better welfare for policing and a mandatory yeah. standard on welfare for policing. And I don't campaign in a way that in Salute Britain did. However, equally, maybe that's why it hasn't had okay. change because I haven't used my voice like that. So, you know, there is argument to two ways and I think it's a fine line. Um, obviously, the way in Salute Britain did it is, is really causing grave problems. Well, I, whereas, think, they've done, I know, think they've done massive damage. They've done massive damage to their cause. Now, yeah. whenever I hear the word insulation, I see a traffic jam on the M1. I've never cared less about insulating <laughs> any homes. In fact, I'd quite like to rip insulation out of houses now, for goodness sake, as a result of this lot. But, Matt... I just want to. I just want to come to you, really. How did the? How were you treated by police? I mean, I look back on some of the things that you did. I think you were quite lucky not to get shot. Well, we were. We 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 had contingencies for that, particularly when we did um, Buckingham Palace. Actually, the the rank and file police were great. Um, some of the people I dealt with uh, at Scotland Yard were really, really good guys. But the police are politicised. They are an instrument of the state. They came after us. Let's be honest about it. They came after us. I had counter-terrorism command come to my home in Hampshire yep. and interrogate me about what I was planning. I said, what am I going to show you? My my Superman fancy dress suit uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and a window cleaning ladder. I mean, I look more like the Richard <laughs> Man than Superman in Lycra. It was absolutely ridiculous. And the level of intensity and scrutiny and the smear, we had the uh, Tony Blair uh, kidnap plot. We were plotting to kidnap Leo Blair, his son, which was on the front page of the Sun newspaper. And it was like a John the Carry novel. I came into London. I used to have four police officers with me. I had my own security entourage. It was ridiculous, ridiculous. No. But, you know, we still managed to get through it. But now yeah. I do fear for this, this bill is dangerous. 
This is the kind of bill. I don't want my, I don't want to live in a police state. I don't want my children to live in a police state. If I wanted to live in a police state, I'd move to China. I'd go to Belarus. I'd live in handcuffs. But I live in the United Kingdom, in Great Britain, which is supposed to be the bastion of democracy. So we need protest. Well, we do indeed need protest, actually, and and we do need extremes on both. We do need we do indeed need extremes on both sides because that drives change one way or the other, and etc. 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 I'm just going to give the final word to you, Sam, if that's okay. Do most police officers actually sometimes feel quite a lot of sympathy for the people who are doing the protesting? I mean, we did see that Insulate Britain were offered tea and biscuits, for goodness sake. Well, I mean, yeah, police officers are human beings and they get branded as one, you know, one person. Like if, if a bad police officer gets put in the press, all police officers are scum. That seems to be how it is. Yet if a bad plumber gets put in the press, not all plumbers are scum. So it is difficult. But yes, they're all individuals. They've all got different views. You'll have some people who have right wing views, yeah. some who have left wing, some people agree and some don't. But the point is, when you hold that, you know, officer constable, you agree to enforce the law. So you're at the mercy of the law. Um, and you don't actually really get a say about it. No. And, and, you know, when you are, this is my only thing I will say, when you are not happy with the police officers enforcing the law, don't blame them. Don't call yeah. them scum and spit at them. Just remember the person you need to blame is the MPs or the people in Parliament, and you need to challenge that. Obviously, that's a, another reason why we've got to be careful about keeping uh, the, these um, uh, the right to speak and, and, and what loudness and yeah. all that hushed down, because actually... In a way, they're going to silence people challenging that. And, and that's where it becomes yeah. a bit of a, a circle and a bit of a problem. Absolutely. Look, both of you, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you very much. I'm sure our viewers did as well. Former frontline well, police officer Sam Smith and Matt O'Connor, founder of Fathers for Justice. Both of them there just discussing this new bill that was knocked into touch by the laws that could essentially have changed the way that we protest in this country forever. Some said it would have been a good thing to shut insulate Britain up. Some other people said, hey, it's a draconian, never-ending march towards a police state. But anyway.